All right, English 111 students, this is Dr. Mark Tinsley, and you're joining me in, believe it or not, week eight of our course. This, this week marks the halfway point of our course, and I say this in my weekly email, but I'll say it here as well. You got to stay up with your work. This is an opportunity to fall behind um, because in the second half of the semester, that's when all of the papers and the final projects and final exams and whatnot start coming due. And if you fall behind now, it's going to be hard to catch back up. So stay with us, all right? Don't fall behind. Um, all right, English 111, week 8. What are we doing? Okay, we're still in Chapter 7. We were in Chapter 7 last week. We're in Chapter 7 this week. We're talking about structuring the argument. So I'm going to go through a bit of a lecture here. You'll see on your screen that I have an example of a five-paragraph essay here. We're going to walk through that. I want to show you what a good five-paragraph essay looks like. Structurally, what does it look like? We're, we've talked about the components. Now I want to go through and show you what those components are look like okay uh, most of you probably understand this this is just going to be the icing on the cake but maybe some of you out there don't quite know what a five paragraph essay looks like maybe you've not been taught this well enough in the past i uh, haven't encountered it enough to have it really stick in your mind so we're going to try to do that today uh what's due this week uh two things number one quiz number four you need to take quiz four this week and you need to turn in the rough draft of your essay number two if you're going to turn in your rough draft. Now, again, rough draft turn-in is not required in this class, but I do allow you to turn it in so I can take a quick look at it if you want me to, and I'll give you some feedback. Uh, I will also give you a little bit of feedback probably on your uh, topics that you were to turn in uh, this week, between last week and this week. Um, uh, so be looking for that, but if you... Um, let me back up for a second. I'm saying this week, last week. Let, let me make sure that I'm clear. Week six, we were you were supposed to be turning your topic for essay two. But if you remember, I said hold off on that until I have graded your papers. Week seven, which was this past week, I asked you to go ahead and fill out your topics for essay number two. Now we we said. Now I want to reiterate this. That essay two is just a revision of essay one. I've said this a million times, but I'll make sure we're clear. Essay two is just a revision of essay one. So you have the same topic for essay two as you did for essay one. But if you needed to tweak out your to uh, your uh, thesis statement at all, I asked you to do that before you submitted your topic uh, in Canvas for essay number two. I hope that's clear, okay? Uh, if it's not, email me. Email me. I want to make sure that this is clear for you. I know this can be a little bit confusing. I almost hesitate uh, in an online class to do the mastery learning stuff because it is kind of confusing, especially when I don't mention it in the syllabus. Uh, but I like to do it. I like to kind of spring it on students because it's a surprise. And for a lot of you, I think it's a pleasant surprise. Hey, I don't have to write a completely new essay number two. I can start with essay one and just make it better. Um, but uh, but it is a little bit confusing sometimes for students, especially those students who don't listen closely to what we're saying in these lectures. And I, I'm assuming if you're listening to me now that you're not one of those students. So reiterate, essay two is a revision of essay one. I still want you to submit your topics. I hope you've done that by now. If you haven't, go ahead and do that. But this week, week eight, now I hope I'm being clear, this week, week eight, you're doing quiz number four, and you're going to turn in your rough draft. Now, your rough draft is obviously just a revision rough draft of essay number one. So you shouldn't have had to start completely from scratch. Now, some people may have had to go back and do a lot of revision. Some people may have had to do just a little bit of revision. But everybody should have done some revision because, remember, uh, in this essay number two, Whereas essay one, number one had no sources, essay number two has at least two scholarly sources that you must incorporate. So everybody should be doing a little bit of revision if it's only to add some sources. However, look at my comments on essay one and make all the changes that I recommend it because I'm going to go back and look at essay one compared to what you turn in for essay two. And if you've done nothing different, seriously, folks, let me reiterate this. If, you've, if you do nothing different... For essay two, if you turn in the same paper as you did essay one, I will know it, and you will get a zero for the paper. 
But if you do the revisions, the things that I asked you to do, you make an attempt to do better, then I'll grade that paper. And if you have made the revisions uh, that I requested, you should do better and your grade should improve. For those people who had a great grade on the first paper, you didn't have a lot of uh, a constructive criticism, maybe I said, hey, great job, you know what you're doing, you, you're, you're a five paragraph essay expert. I don't think I said that about anyone, but uh, if you get the idea that you know you, you nailed it, then your revisions are going to be minor, and this is going to be a pretty easy paper for you. You add a few couple sources, two or three sources, um, make a few changes here and there, and you're done. And that's fine. That's where you are. If you're not in that boat, if you have to make a lot more revisions, then that's just where you are. But here's the thing. Everybody will become a better writer through this process, okay? But again, if you don't want to turn in a rough draft for SA2, you don't have to do that. But if you do, I'll take a look at it and I'll give you some comments back. Okay, so in essay, excuse me, in chapter seven this week, quiz number four due this week, rough drafts due this week if you're going to turn them in, and uh, we're pressing on in essay number two. All right. At this point, I don't think what I have to say today is really going to take all that long. I'm not going to try to make it short. But I don't think that, uh, I think what I have to say is pretty straightforward, and I hope that it's clear and uh, is helpful to you. What you see in front of you right now, what you've been seeing in front of you right now, is an example of a five uh, paragraph essay. Now, this is obviously not four to five pages. Your papers are four to five pages, but this is just a sample. As you can see, the reference down here at the bottom, this was written by a, an English composition professor at uh, UNA University Writing Center about 13 years ago. So this is an older paper, but it's still relevant because it shows us how to write a good five-paragraph essay. Okay, if you'll remember in the introduction, and I'm just going to go down through here and we're going to look through this example, we'll through another example, and then we'll call it a day. This is titled Example Five-Paragraph Essay on the advantages of a five paragraph model. Okay, so this is just, this is kind of a meta writing example, if you will. But notice in the beginning, remember I said you have your hook. That first sentence is something that should grab your reader's attention. Now, you can argue whether or not this is a good hook, but we'll call it a good hook. I love using the five paragraph model for writing. Okay, that captures my attention. That tells me right now, okay, Maybe I want to listen to this because I have to write a five-paragraph essay. And if this person loves five-paragraph essays, then maybe I should listen. So there's my hook, that first sentence. Then you'll notice that we move into the background section of the introduction. Now this person is just going to give us some background information, not going to start making the argument yet, just background information on five-paragraph essays. So I can find three points to argue for or exemplify just about any topic imaginable. Cats are good pets because they're good companions, they're clean and they're easy to care for. Jaws is a classic film because it's of its acting, its cinematography, and its musical score. Three examples of the U.S. government's checks and balances are its executive branch, its legislative branch, and its judicial branches. So this person's just given us background on a five-paragraph essay, basically saying, hey, listen, I can write just about anything. I can write on Cats. I can write on uh, Jaws, the movie. I can write on the, the U.S. government, checks and balances. I can write on anything. And then here comes the thesis statement. This last sentence, remember the thesis statement is the last sentence in the introduction, and here it is. The five paragraph model is a valuable tool for many writing situations because it structures my writing, it aids my readers, and it is versatile. That's the thesis. Notice that it has a topic, the five paragraph model. It has an assertion that it is a valuable tool for many writing situations. And, and this is what I want to teach you from now on, it includes my three main points. And those come after the because statement. Because, and here are my three main points, it structures writing, one. It aids my readers, two. And it is versatile, three. Notice that in this thesis statement, I'm making an argument. I'm making something I can prove or disprove, theoretically. I'm definitely making something I can, I'm stating something, I'm making an assertion that I can defend, right? The five paragraph model is a ver valuable tool for many writing situations. That's my assertion. And my main points are it structures my writing, it aids my readers, and it is versatile. Okay? 
The next paragraph then is my first main body paragraph, which should start with a topic sentence. The topic sentence should contain the main point for that paragraph. My first main point, if you look over here, is that it structures my writing, right? That's my first main point. So that should be my first main point in my first topic sentence. So let's look. One advantage of the five paragraph model is that it structures what I write. Do you see that? There's that main point. And then the rest of this paragraph is just fleshing out that main point, that it structures what I write. So listen, before I learned the five paragraph recipe, I'd either stare at a blank screen or I'd write one big block of text. <coughs> now I know to first identify three examples, reasons, or other supporting pieces of evidence. Then I develop those three examples, reasons, or pieces of evidence into its own paragraph. I write a thesis statement based off those three examples, reasons, or pieces of evidence. I flesh out my introduction with a hook, and I write a conclusion paragraph. Following the five-paragraph model makes my writing task considerably less intimidating. Notice that everything in that paragraph supported that main point that it structures what I write. Nothing was said about the other two main points yet, right? That it aids my readers and that it is versatile. Right now, all the writer is worried about in that first paragraph is talking about how it structures his or her writing. However, when we get to the second main body paragraph, we should get to the second main point, which I found in my thesis. It aids my readers. Let's see. A related advantage of the five paragraph model is that my following the recipe makes it easy for my readers to follow my writing. There it is. There's that main point in the topic sentence, the first sentence of the second main body paragraph. When readers see the five paragraphs, not one block of text, they can anticipate that I'll introduce my topic in my first paragraph and I'll conclude my first paragraph with my thesis statement. Readers can predict that I'll provide three examples, reasons, or other supporting evidence to support my thesis statement, each of which will be fleshed out in its own paragraph. Boom, boom, boom. And readers know that they'll find my conclusions in my final fifth paragraph. By using the five-paragraph model, by using the five-paragraph model, I ease the burden on my readers. You see that? Isn't that amazing? So my second main point is in my second main body paragraph. Guess what's going to be in my third main body paragraph? Right down here where it says a third advantage. It should be my third main point, which I found in my thesis. It says it is versatile. Let's go down here. A third advantage of the five-paragraph model is that, like most recipes, it can be doubled or even tripled. Now, that doesn't say it's versatile directly, and I would say that that's maybe a little weakness of this, um, uh, this topic sentence, but you can see that's what the writer is driving at. A third advantage of the five-paragraph model is that, like most recipes, it can be doubled or even tripled. In other words, it's versatile, right? For a standard 400 to 500 word paper, I apply the single, I apply the standard single batch of the recipe, writing 75 or 100 words in each of the five paragraphs. For a thousand word essay, I double the recipe, writing my two paragraphs rather than only one for the introduction and the three supporting paragraphs, the inclusion paragraph. And I, I can even write a 5,000 word essay, uh, paper with this recipe by writing a thousand words for each of my five components. The five paragraph model is versatile for all my writing needs. Okay, do you see that? And then our conclusion, it's obvious. I'm clearly a fan of the five paragraph model. So there it is, there's our topic. As long as I'm able to outline three reasons why psychology is my favorite subject, three arguments why Pulp Fiction is better than Forrest Gump, and three examples of how Shakespeare works are relevant to current day society, I can write about any analytic essay. Here's the restatement. Remember, we want to restate our, our thesis and our main points in our conclusion. Here it is. The five-paragraph model is truly a valuable tool. I wish my life was as well-structured, versatile, and easy to follow as the five-paragraph model. There's the creative restatement of the, the thesis and the main points. Now, the only thing I ask you to do that you don't see done here is that in the conclusion you should add next steps. What are some next steps your readers can take uh, now that they have this information that you've just given, that, this argument that you've made, uh, what can they do with that now? So I ask you to add next steps. But do you see all the, the parts? They're right here, right? And they're all in the right places. This is the standard five-paragraph format that I'm trying to teach you. Okay, again, you can go to this link. I've, I've included the link to what we're looking at right here online. You can read through all of these, and I'll just scroll down. You'll see there are a bunch of examples 
but I'm not going to go through all these examples. We're going to look at one more example, and then I'm going to let you go. Let's look at this one, a five-paragraph essay example about going to the movies, okay? All right. Again, what do we want to start off with? We want to start off with a hook, right? I am a movie fanatic. There it is. Right there's the hook. Now, is that a great hook? I don't know. You have to judge that. But, hey, maybe it is. Maybe it draws me in as a, as a, as a reader. I, hey, this guy's a fanatic. I want to listen to this uh, person, see what, uh, what this person has to say. So there it is. There's my hook. I'm a movie fanatic. When friends want to know what picture won the Oscar in 2001, they ask me. This is all background, right? When friends want to know who voiced Optimus Prime in Transformers, they ask me. Again, this is all background. This person has not making, is not making an argument yet. They're just telling you about being a movie fanatic. And I'm a movie fanatic. They're going to tell you a little bit about that. However, my buddies have stopped asking me if I want to go out to the movies. While I love movies as much as ever, I find it more enjoyable to wait for a movie's release on Netflix because of the inconvenience of going out, the temptations of the concession stand, and the behavior of some patrons. So do you see that last sentence is the thesis. So Hook, I'm a movie fanatic. Background tells a little bit about his friends and how they like that you know they, they know he's a, a a movie fanatic. They ask him and and uh, who voiced Optimus Prime. So that's all background just kind of leading you up to that thesis statement which is while I love movies as much as ever, I find it more enjoyable to wait for a movie's release on Netflix because of the inconvenience of going out, the temptations of the concession stand, and the behavior of some patrons. Obviously, the topic is movies, and the assertion is it's more enjoyable to wait for movies to release on Netflix. That's the assertion. That's the argument that this author is going to make. Why? Here are the three main points. Because of the inconvenience of going out, number one, the temptations of the concession stand, number two, and the behavior of some patrons, number two three. Okay. So our first main point should be what? Inconvenience of going out. So our first main body paragraph should talk about the inconvenience of going out. So let's look in the topic sentence and see if that's what happens. First sentence of the first main body paragraph says, first of all, just getting to the theater presents difficulties. There it is. The inconvenience of going out. Do you see the, the parallel there? And then the person just goes ahead for the rest of that paragraph and tells us about how difficult it is to go out, how inconvenient it is to go out to the theater, okay? Then the second main body paragraph. Second, the theater offers tempting snacks that I don't really need. What was the second main point from the thesis? The temptations of the concession stand. So you see the parallel there. The topic sentence in main body paragraph number two is the same main point that was made in the thesis statement in the second position. And then the final position in the thesis statement is that the main point is going to be the behavior of some patrons. We look down here in the third main body paragraph, and, and what's it say? Finally, some of the other patrons are even more of a problem than the concession stand. There's that main point. Do you see how everything just kind of flows and builds? Notice how the thesis statement is always the last sentence in the introduction. Notice that the topic sentence that contains the main point is always the first sentence in the main body paragraph. And then we get to the conclusion. And after arriving home from the movies one night, I decided I had had enough. I was not going to be a moviegoer anymore. I was tired of the problems involved in getting to the theater, resisting unhealthy snacks, and dealing with the patrons. Do you see the restatement of the main points in the thesis there? The next day, I arranged to have premium movie channels added to my cable TV service, and I got a Netflix membership. I may now see movies a bit later than other people, but I'll be more relaxed watching box office hits in the comfort of my own living room. Do you see how tight these essays are? Notice that every one of them has a clear subject, or excuse me, a clear topic, a clear assertion, and cle three clear main points. And at the top in the thesis statement. And then in the topic sentences, the, those main points are brought out very clearly. And then they're talked about, fleshed out within those paragraphs. Do you see that? If you don't, you can email me or continue looking at some of these other examples. The next one's about cats. The next example's about exercise. After that, we have an example about a failure preceding success. We have a, one on examples of a, of a med student language, one on media fear mongering. Okay, you can go through these, read through them, circle, highlight. Well, I'd like you to do that, actually, since we have a shorter lecture today. Take some of these other ones 
and circle the thesis statement, circle the topics, circle the uh, assertions, circle the main points, label them. Take, take a minute, look at some of these, and see if you can pull out the elements that we've just talked about in the two examples we looked at here in the lecture. Okay, that'd be a good, that'd be a good exercise for you to do, okay? Uh, and if you, if you want to ask me, hey, do you think this is the thesis for this one, or do you think this is the topic sentence for this one, or do you think this is the main point, email me or call me. Let's talk about it. I want to help you. I really do, folks. My whole goal in this class is to see you become better writers. I, I truly, genuinely want that for each of you. But you have to put in the hard work, right? You do have to put in the hard work. And I suspect that most of you are willing to do that. And those of you that are willing to do that will see success. All right. I hope this has helped. Um, again, structuring the argument is an important lecture. Um, it is an important foundation for the rest of our class. I hope that it helps you as you draft uh, the rough draft for SA2, as you revise SA1, right? Because SA2 is a revision of SA1. Um, and I hope it, you know, it certainly will help you as we do essays three and four down the road. But folks, again, use me. Ask me questions. I'm here for you. I really am. And by the end of this week, right, what are we going to do? Finish reading chapter seven. Listen to this lecture. Listen to it again if you need to. Take quiz four. Ten questions, just like always. And, uh, and if you decide to do so, turn in essay two the SA2 rough draft so that I can take a look at it, okay? All right, wow, here we are. Back again, folks, and uh, I'm excited. I'm so excited that we're at the halfway point. I'm so excited to see SA2 and see the improvements on it uh, here in another week or so when we turn it in. Um, yeah, I, I'm here for y'all. I really am. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. Maybe I just need to shut up <laughs> right there. I want you to be successful, and I want to be a part of that success. So listen to this lecture. Have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great and wonderful week. Talk to you soon. Bye now.